Hello right bags, it's Jade, welcome to a Subnautica Below Zero Guide to Base Building. Now I'm going to show you how to get the Habitat Builder quickly, couple locations, lots of base parts really super quickly that you'll desperately need, and give you just a few tips and pointers about how some of this stuff actually works. Now I'm going to lie, I'm hoping this video does as well as my original Subnautica Starter Guide. It's my third most watched video on the channel with over 800,000 views. So hopefully you'll find some benefits today. Um, forgive me if I make any mistakes, I did make a few in that original one years ago but hopefully I've learned a lot in the last few years. Not lots has changed with Below Zero but there are a few key pointers. As I explain everything you need to know about hull integrity, power for your bases and a lot more. So let's go through, let's take a look at the starter guides to building and check out my next video. I'm going to go through more advanced stuff showing off some of the more advanced materials, pretty much every base build and how you can get them and what you need from. I've got loads of other guides, go and check them out. The Home of Survival, let's go. So you should find that rise and follow where I am. Your drop pod does spawn in different locations sometimes whenever you start a new game. So just try and find the right area. But basically you're looking for a platform down here. So try and follow where I am or look for the platform down here. And you see this arch. We've got to be a bit careful because I haven't got loads of oxygen. And you see inside here, this is where the habitat builder is. So go ahead and give it a scan. And you should only need one piece, and that is a good way to do it. And now we've got that, I'm going to quickly grab this as well, because might as well. It is a solar panel. No, no, it's a something else. I'm pretty sure that's the special uh, diving thing. And away we go. There you go. Look at that. We did it, guys. We did it. High capacity tank. There we go. That's how you can get more breath once we go back to base and make one of them bad boys. But that's not the only location where you can find one. Now, do you need base building in these early stages? Probably not. By the time you've gone down to the Twisty Bridges, explored some of the story and stuff, I would say you maybe want to think about making a base when you go and discover some more of the outposts, particularly Delta Outpost, and you want to have a base in that direction. Because you're going to be spending a lot of time on that land over in that way and I reckon that's best base selection spot. Around here you've got the drop pod so there's no real need to have a base close to your drop pod unless you really just want to test stuff out. But let's go inside anyway. And there you go, the habitat builder needs one wiring kit, one computer chip and one battery. Batteries, two ribbon plants, one copper ore. Computer chip is table coral, gold and the copper wire. And obviously the wiring kit is silver ore. Now for quickness, I have used the cheat, which is no build cost. I'll show you guys how to activate the dev cheats if you really want to use them. But just for this guide, I just want to show you the beginning without cheats. So as I said, it depends where you want to build. You could even build on top of some of these uh, ice igloos. Maybe not best advised, but you could do it if you really wanted to. So I'm not 100% sure if it's completely okay to build on some of these little ice flows. It looks a little bit red, a little bit yellow. But then again, if I'm in the water a little bit, it says I can kind of build. But there we go. Press the A button or the X button, depending on what you're using. And then we can jump on top of our platform and start building a base. It's a really poor time for me to show this at night time. But hey ho. Press RT, R2 again. And then you can just simply make a simple compartment. It doesn't have to be a big rounded compartment as your first base. You just need to put a doorway on it. So a hatch like that, and then get inside. Hypothermia imminent. There Emergency we go. Power only. So this Oxygen will keep you warm enough. Offline. And as long as you're not underwater, then obviously you're not going to run out of oxygen. But if you did this in the water, your oxygen would go down because you need to put a power source down. So we'll get to that in a second. Let's do the fabricator though so we can craft more items. Let's grab one of them bad boys. So. Like I said, oh, that was quick. Let's get our solar panels down. And it automatically, it should connect. If it doesn't, just dismantle it and do it again. What you should notice is that if you make a mistake putting something down, you will get fully refunded. You will get all your items back if you, want to, if you accidentally do something. So if I press deconstruct, I will get all my stuff back. Okay, so I'm going to go inside. Now, one little crucial thing is that when there are storms and there's a quite a few more of them I do believe it has a chance of obstructing the solar panel a bit more but you can see the power is building up so usually a one little base like this a couple of uh, modifications or stations and stuff and you're not necessarily gonna run out of power 
But very quickly, you will find that once you start putting lots of stuff, like battery chargers everywhere, maybe the bioreactor and some other unlocks that I'm going to show you guys, you will suddenly drain a lot of your power quickly. And as soon as it becomes nighttime, if you're only relying on like one solar panel, you're going to find you're running out of power. In fact, even sometimes when you've got two or three solar power panels, you'll still run it out. But you can see I've got two lines now running into it. If you look at the solar panel without anything in your hand, it will tell you how much charge is going into it. So we've got 75 in each of these, and it's slowly building up. It's showing the strength at 94%, obviously because there is a bit of a storm. And that's not too bad, actually. So it does look like the storm might not be too bad. I am going to stick here just a bit longer. I want to see if this dangerous, dangerous storm reduces it. Nope, if anything, it's getting stronger. So ignore that. I, I, I'm pretty sure, I swear... I used to have it that way. Oh, oh, have I left it too late? Ooh, nearly froze there. Nearly froze. Well, there we go. We've got 150 power. And it's all well and good. I'm just going to put one more down somewhere. Now, you can place these elsewhere. You might even be able to place them on certain structures on top. You can see that one's going inside it as well. And there you go, we've got 225 power. So that's what you've got to remember. Anything you place might have a power usage. It will tell you. Now, a few things to note as well, that the battery charger here will just simply recharge your batteries. And to make one, you just need some titanium, some copper wire, and a wiring kit. The solar panels are just some quartz, some titanium, and some copper ore. And generally, build pieces like these usually only cost a little bit of titanium, with only things like the foundation requiring some lead, the hatch requiring some quartz and the reinforcements requiring lithium. Now when it comes to lithium, that's a bit of a harder resource to get hold of sometimes and effectively you're just making your base a little bit stronger. So if I place this one here, there you go, I've just reinforced my base. Now on land, this doesn't really kind of apply, I don't think it does anyway. But in the water, it definitely does. You've got to be careful about where you build and obviously it means that if you're building close to a lot of enemies and they're attacking your base then you've got to make sure you've got lots of stability so let's try and build something just here quickly you see now two to hold strength total now 12 and we'll do the same thing again we'll just simply do a very basic thing now i've gone minus one to hold base strength because i've added something on it so it's reduced it down i'm gonna go another one there you can see again We've got that. I will show you what happens when it goes to zero. And then maybe I want to connect something up. And I could probably get rid of that. And we'll do another one right here. We'll rotate it left or right. And you can see my whole strength has gone down to nine. So that's, that's weak. You'll start getting leaks at some point. Now let's get some hatches on quick. And let's get ourselves a one of these ones quickly as well and then we've got to get out probably gonna have to go up quickly and now you're wondering how i'm gonna power it up because obviously i'm under the water so i'm not gonna get any sunlight well one solar panel should still be enough to power up your little base here there we go 75 we're doing all right we're doing all right so it's a good idea to have these sit pretty much everywhere like take the materials with you and literally put one foundation down one pipe have enough for the fabricator and enough for one at least um, you know source of energy and that way you've got somewhere to save every time you come in and out of your base you save your progress so everything in your inventory you will have if you then go and die outside you'll respawn you only lose the stuff that you've just been gaining apart from maybe one or two items sometimes so we're all good here we can see our little uh thingamajig is recharging nicely and even though it's daytime it's only got about 95 percent that's because we've gone down a little bit we're not right near the surface so we're only getting 95 percent of it uh what we can also do is we can go down a bit further so let's go and find a bit of a deeper trench so the deeper you go down the less effective your sources of light are going to be so you've got to be careful about that so we're what probably only 50 60 let's go all the way down let's try and get down here there's some of that red table coal let's get to 100 Warning. Uh, we'll have to be meters. quick on this because i haven't got the best stuff going on boom 
And then we need boom. Quick, 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 quick. Boom. Warning. 30 seconds of oxygen and then... remaining. Ah! Power restored. Boom. All primary systems online. Open the hatch. Inside we go. Woo! Welcome aboard. We did it. We did it. So you can see, as long as you've got that, you don't need a fabricator inside your base. You only need a power source. You can see, during the day, at 100 meters, we're only getting about 50% charge, and that's our max. So when it gets night time, you can bet you're going to run out of power. Even if you go ahead and build just a bunch more of these, you might run into problems. But you'll be surprised how much power you do get out of just one of these, at surprisingly, at some deeper sort of depths. You're going to have to put a lot more down to kind of maintain that power. And when it is night time, effectively, your drain on these will go. So you're not going to suddenly lose power the minute it goes midnight, but you will notice that your power level will start dipping. So yeah, be careful. You can build a base relying on just solar power as far as like 200 meters, maybe a little bit further, but you're only going to get 10% sunlight. So you need other things to help you with that. What we can do is we can make these transmitters. And you can place these pretty much anywhere around. Because what we're going to do is we're going to connect this to a source up top. Now this is a bit of a long thing. You are going to find some upgrades that are going to help a lot with this. The bioreactor will give you power as well. But yeah, no, I'm just kind of trying to show you various different ways and what their uses are. So I'm going to put a just one of these bad boys here because we're much closer to the surface. In fact, let's put another one there as well. There we go. And we're kind of all connecting up now, so that should be putting a lot more power back into our base. So go ahead and build really deep if you really want to, but make sure you've got some sort of power line connecting. You can see there's zero charge in that sun now. So you'll notice that I can't put this bio generator down because I need a special base piece to pop it down. And this is a good way for powering up bases, especially when you're really deep and nowhere near sunlight. There's also another couple of ways. You will get a thermal uh, plant that you need against sort of air vents and you can have them on land or you might find geysers underneath the water. They're really good too. Or you could go ahead and you can use a nuclear reactor. Um, but they're going to need reactor rods and that's pretty advanced. That's like really end game based stuff. Also bear in mind that when you're deeper, your hull integrity is going to be worse than when you're near. So basically the pressure of the water means that you're going to have to reinforce more the deeper your base is. So I told you guys there's another location where you can get the habitat builder and there's another good reason to go to this location. Head towards the back of kind of the map. It's pretty much the north you'll see this great big massive ice shelf ice wall and you probably want to be doing this really with maybe the sea truck but if you're really quick you don't panic too much about being in the dark you'll be okay and you want to follow it to the right hand side if you're facing the wall or the left hand side if you're facing your uh, escape pods. Now you gotta be careful for these dudes, they freeze you, but you can break away by tapping the attack button. And just, you'll get to a little surrounding one here, keep going through and underneath this arch, and then rise yourself up. And look, you'll see there's a little opening. This is Outpost Zero. Now this is a, part, a big part of the story, so I don't want to spoil it too much what you find here. You are going to have to be careful about your temperature, but there's loads of these to keep you warm. And if we go along down the sides, we'll have lots to investigate, which I'm not going to focus on. You can go and check that out. I've done a video checking all this stuff out, a Let's Play, a while ago. But the most important thing while we're here is there's lots of base pieces that we can actually scan. And that's the most important thing. That's what we're really here for. So. Go ahead and get your scanner out and just go absolutely ham looking around. Obviously you've got prawn suits and stuff. There we go. That saved me having to do the guide later. I'll just do it here. Two of them. Floodlight. Grab that. That's not a bad little base piece as well. Like I said, it does get a bit cold. But you can go inside these buildings here. And there we go. We're okay. So we can scan the large room fragment and this is quite a big addition to the game that wasn't there in the first one having these large rooms boom got more lockers got all sorts of stuff going on 
posters, benches, chic plant pot, windows, trash can, the bulkhead. You don't need to reinforce, as I said, on land. Slightly different, obviously that's a bulkhead doorway. Got the water filtration machine, so you can make your own water. And the multi-purpose room, which is what we've always had in the original game. And it's a little bit smaller, it's a lot smaller than these large rooms. But this is what you need to place the bioreactor in. And then, like I said, I don't want to spoil the story too much. So just go in here and scan absolutely everything. So you've got more decoration pieces. Now, unfortunately, you can't just use this place as your base. That would have been actually pretty cool. That is quite freaky. I've never realized that before. Oh, office chair. Yeah, we'll take one of them. Thank you very much. And here we've got some plant pots as well, some grow beds. So we definitely have them. So there's a bit of food here if you need it. I'm playing in freedom mode and you might have guessed that I am kind of slightly cheating. I've made it so that I don't have any costs when building. Just to show you guys on this occasion, multi-purpose glass room. It's all good in the hood. I think there's only a couple more bits at the back here now maybe. Yeah, bar table, we'll have that. We'll have the vendor machine. Yeah, why not? Oh, we've got more stuffs, more pictures of potato. <laughs> Damage modification station. This is vital for making lots of your mods. And if we open up this data box, that is going to give us the control room. I think that's what that does. It gives you the control room where you can, I think, have the drones. Have nine cube, why not? So, yeah, pretty much coming in here and scan absolutely everything. Now, it's quite a nice day out. I think we've gone and explored all the areas we can explore pretty sure we've got all the pieces yep there's the rooms for that one did that one it's getting a little bit cold now it's the wee bit chilly let's run over here and see if there's anything else we can get hold of lightning stick fragment yeah we'll have that too why not I think that is it I'm pretty sure there's not much else going on here in terms of like base pieces Oh, it's a desk if you go all the way down this little rock corridor. We've got this giant icicles and stuffs. Ooh, spoiler, spoiler, story, story stuff. Actually, I don't think you can get in here, so it's not that spoilerish. I'm pretty sure we can't get in. Coffee machine, there we go. Got to have a cup of joe. Now, that's actually got a use. It will give you some liquid. We're not going in there. We've got to find a way to get in there a bit later on. So there we go guys, that is how to get lots of base pieces. So I did say there's a habitat builder, I'm going to show you where it is. They are usually random, but certain pieces will always spawn in exactly the same spot, but a lot of them will be random in that area. So always go to that area and you should find them close by. But if you look in a lot of the boxes, hopefully you would have hopefully come across, across one. Gonna get a rebreather, destroy the snowman, oh no, rip. I guess the only real last useful thing to say is if you did manage to bring a uh, oh, aquarium. There we go, there's an aquarium right here. Boom. Now if you did bring a spy penguin with you, you should be able to get into this little gap here and go and get some resources and stuff inside there too. What we've got? Sea glide. Come on. Where's the good stuff? Give me the good stuff. There we go. There's the habitat builder. I knew it was around somewhere. You should find it. It should be littered on one of these boxes or inside. So yeah, come back here with a penguin, and obviously you'll be back here to open up that great big green doorway. And then to go home, you just simply dive back into the water, go straight down, and then just make sure you're keeping to the right hand side. Uh, uh, and just keep tapping the RT, R2 button quicker, and you'll break free from the ice. They're more annoying than anything. And now we can see all the stuff that we've got. The water filtration unit. You are going to need some more advanced gear to make some of this though. The aerogel. The bulkhead's okay. Just silicon and titanium. The bioreactor obviously now you'll be able to place because you've got the room for it. Large room partition so you can make little dividers. And the partition doors too. That's all pretty simple. Locker, a freestanding one. Then the aquarium. The modification station. You are going to need a diamond as well with some lead for that. Coffee's just titanium, titanium, titanium. Beds is all titanium and mesh. There's all different types, lots of desks. Nothing really too unusual here. Lights, glass, titanium, and a snowman if you really wanted to. But this is the one we really wanted, like a multi-purpose room or the large room. So I didn't think we could build 
them just on the water like that. But you know what? Let's 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 see if we can do it. Let's put it as low as we can. I, I've learned that lesson. Hypothermia imminent. There we go. Just put one down. I'm gonna jump in the water a second. Obviously, they go under water as well. You can place them almost anywhere. There you go. That's another one. You can see, its whole strength is only six, though. Now, that's one thing I didn't really talk about was make sure you've got good, solid foundations, and that'll increase your chances of having a sturdy, sturdy base. So, if I were to say put like one there, you don't absolutely need foundations, but they do help. You see, it's got twelve, and then if we deconstruct that. Pretty sure this one has got like a low thingy. Let's put another one next door to it. See, it's growing, it's faulting, it's multiplying because they're connected to each other. Here, like that, 16. Oh no, we're 20 now. Nah. There you go. So you're giving yourself extra, extra strength when you then start building some of this stuff on top of it. So, like I said, I did kind of want to have this in the air like that one yeah I think we should do that one let's do it and see what happens it's probably going to say it's got the whole strength of like zero. Oh no it's not so much is it just kind of floating on the screen I guess it is I guess it is all right let's put the doorway on I think the larger rooms especially if they're near the surface don't necessarily need as much to do with obviously the whole integration it is about the pressure so I think you can put hatches on yep you can and it'll just be a way in there you go, I'll just reduce the strength of it. I'm pretty sure I can put a bulkhead down. I should be able to. I reckon that will proper annoy people that um, you're kind of still swimming around in water. So yeah, you, you design your base how you want. I'm only here to show you guys how to make all this shizzle. Let's try putting just a regular multi-purpose room down. Let's get inside. Um, we're going to quickly put the... Bioreactor. There we go. Ba -ba. And then if we put some stuff inside it, it will power us up. There you go. You just put plants, you put food inside, and it will give you some power. Obviously, it won't last too long. So have some backups, have some batteries. That's something else you can get eventually. You see, it's doing the job, and it's giving us a bit of power. And that's how you can also power up your base. Right, let's put one of these down at last. In fact, since I'm here, it might as well be a little bit extra. Can we do that? Oh, come on. Now, base building is a bit sucky sometimes. It doesn't always go exactly how you want it to. So if that's the case, you kind of got to just build out a bit more. So what we'll do is we'll do that now. Oh no, it's the doorway. You've got to get rid of the hatch first. That's the problem I had there. Oxygen. There we go, like that. Oh, and now we need the hatch. Nice, great, big, stonking room. Go ahead, put some windows out. Have a little look right outside. There you go. See what's going on all around you. Put a reinforcement along the way as well. There you go. I've increased my whole strength now. It's 23. So if you are around lots of creatures, or you're building lots of big parts of your base, just remember to boost it up a little bit with them sections. Vertical connectors are... They're fiddly, I ain't gonna lie, they're really fiddly. You generally have to build something on top of each other to get it to kind of work. And they usually connect corridors on top of each other. Yeah, we'll go down this way, let's go down this way. Let's put a, another piece here. And then we'll go multi-purpose room again. And we'll put another one right on top. So, if you want to build on top of each other, you need to get a ladder and go ahead and you can place it anywhere you see these. You can even put one right in the middle if you wanted to. Probably not best advised though. There you go. We can get up to the top level. And I think we can make this a glass dome. 
And there we go. You can see up to the top of the ceiling now. I have a water filtration unit in here as well. That needs the wall piece, I think, to connect it to it. I think you also need salt as well. Get a couple of freestanding lockers. And we could even put a bed down if we really wanted to. There we go. Cool double bed. We've got our base nicely set up. Now, obviously, this takes a lot of resources. I am cheating at the moment. So bear in mind, it might take you a while to get some of this stuff done. But you get the idea. So this just get you going, show you the example, build your base. Yes, it's going to take you a bit longer because you're going to get the resources for this. But you can always go in creative mode, test some of your designs out, see how it all works, and then go back into your proper game. I definitely advise doing that if you want to see how things work. Um, as I said, if you get a leak, literally it will start filling up. You'll lose oxygen in that part. That's what the bulkheads will help with. You just simply have to have uh, more reinforcements put in or remove a base piece. And that should normally help in a short term. I did get a bit carried away with this video, decorated and doing stuff. I am going to show every single base piece off in another video and explain some of the difficulties in either getting some of the pieces for them or what they really function and how they operate. There's lots of new pieces that have gone into the base design, obviously alongside these large rooms. So yeah, it's definitely worth doing. Just don't build too deep. Don't build too close to the drop pods and have lots of little outposts all over the map to save stuff. Just remember, you'll always respawn at the last one that you entered. I am JPG. I give you the home of guides tutorials news for survival games i will see you rat bags very soon until next time laters